get out of the music business because it's not going to work. By the way, for those of you who are make makers of music, um, I, I want somebody else to comment from another perspective other than publishing. But for those of you who make music, there are three basic publishing societies in the United States that are the primary sources you want to make sure you're involved with. Uh, Trey represents ASCAP, ASCAP. Um, the, the other one is BMI, and the other one is CSAC. You've got to be in that one of those three societies in order to, to get that residual money that comes from your music being played licensed, exploited, played on the radio, what have you. It's not just about the money you make performing and doing live concerts. Can somebody else please comment about what does our, what should our students be looking at in terms of where technology is taking us for our future? Yeah, I would just say um, uh, you don't really, like nowadays you don't have to, you don't have to get a major label deal to be successful. Don't get a record deal? I don't think so. I, I think you can uh, do it with, with a smaller company you don't necessarily need someone to spend a ton of money. I mean, there's, I mean, like, like uh, I forgot, like one of the gentlemen said earlier. I mean, it's real easy for you to make a beat, put it online, get a response real fast. Um, it's just, it's just a lot easier to get your stuff out there. You don't necessarily need to get, uh, uh, you know, a, a million dollar advance for somebody. This is all stuff you have to pay back. So, I mean, if you cut down your overhead and try to generate some traffic to your blog or your site, that's all you need, really. I mean, you can make, I mean, you know, sell, sell 10,000 independent albums, that's, that's good money. If you just, you know, if you can keep, keep doing that and, you know, get a fan base and just build on your fan base, um, just depending, you know, if you're a, 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 a rapper or a singer, for a producer, I mean, I'm still chasing those, uh, <laughs> those major label checks. I mean, I've done stuff for, for uh, Corona, I've done the, the theme to Rap City, I've done um, stuff for the themes to MTV and stuff like that, and that, that's all good money, and I look forward to doing more of that stuff because um, it's, it's, it's like awkward. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not the, you know, not, not, not the hip hop industry where you gotta wait and wait and wait and wait. And, it, and then nowadays, it's like, not a lot of people are dropping. There's only a few out, few artists dropping a quarter. Like it used to be a time where somebody would drop, you know, two, like three or four albums a month. But now it's like everybody's like Ross album. Everybody's waiting for Ross's album. And well, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> but but uh, but yeah. I mean, like I would say though. Oh, just overall, just you know, there's a ton of blogs. I mean, get your. It's not hard to get your own blog or. Get your own website. I'm sure, pretty sure people on campus I mean, know someone that knows how to do their own website. And just find, try to find a creative way to just bring traffic to your site and bring traffic to yourself. Uh, you know, MySpace, Twitter. Twitter is worthy where it is right now. So. Yeah. Man, the main thing is find a way to do something different. Like, everybody in Atlanta wants to be a rapper. Yeah. Who wants to be Dang Dennis or the one to get them on? You know what I mean? So, like, this. Kind of what we said earlier, the same way you're on Twitter all day, find a way to make it better, you know? Because everybody out there trying to be a rapper, if you was the guy back in the day who invented the limp removal, which is a simple thing, mm -hmm. he's seeing more paper than any of these cats. Mm -hmm. So don't just be out tunnel vision on what you're trying to do. It's entertainment at the end of the day. There's a million different ways you can do to be successful in that. You know, most of the time in life, you find the thing that helps you get through your day, that's gonna be something that's gonna to relate to millions of people. So that tool alone is what made Facebook and all that so big. You know, it was two kids in Frisco, or the Bay Area, who was just finding a way to stay in contact with some of their people and some of their classmates. And that turned into the biggest thing they could ever do. They never even thought about what it was originally. You know what I mean? So just expand what you're doing. It seems like a lot of the young cats today, everybody just wanna be a rapper, everybody wanna be a star but don't really want to do the work it takes to be a star. And in this game, if you in it for the money, it ain't gonna work for you. Cause all of us, it ain't no overnight thing. You know what I mean? It's 10 toes in the game before you really see something going on. And if you see it come quick, it's gonna go quick. That's why you see a lot of the one day wonders on VH1, so you don't want to be on that. That makes a very good point. Um, 
the, and thinking out of the box is very important. Whether you want to have an online marketing company, or you want to have a mobile marketing company, or you want to have a company that, that merely uh, tracks the content. Who manages the music that, that's on MySpace? Who is able to relate to um, ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI? What, what music has been exposed on the internet, or on MySpace, or on, on different uh, social networking sites that has, has not been collected on? Trey, would you tell us what happened with AOL? Did, were they, did they not owe you money? Did they think they didn't owe you money? Or was it just that a, no law existed? Or was, it, was it technology? What caused them to be able to owe you $18 million well, that, that nobody knew they, they owed you? Well, until so what it was, it was the, the biggest thing is this, they, they figured that the internet is free. So even though music was being previewed and played on their website, they felt like because the internet was free mm -hmm. that it, they didn't need to pay it. And so what ASCAP fought, just like the radio licensing, is that you're being paid by advertisers, which is generating revenue for your company. So if something's generating revenue for your company and utilizing someone else's property in order to generate that money, then you should have to pay a licensing fee. And that's what ASCAP went after. And, and the new thing is now is you know, people are telling you that they're getting money off of MySpace. That's not true. We're in negotiations with MySpace, but it's kind of hard to, to collect from, from, from performance royalties from MySpace because you know everybody with a mixtape that has a hot track that Maestro or Needles may have done, they're actually taking that track and rapping over it. How can you, how can you monitor that? Like, I can't pay rapper X over Maestro's tracks that he had made and that was on Lil Wayne's album. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't pay him for that. So we need to figure out a way how we might be able to pay, how we, have, how we might be able to collect on those type of MySpace performances, but we are in negotiations to see how that might be done. I mean, because you know, someone gets on there, you know, on there, and they're, you know, who knows? I mean, they may have a fan base, they may have a club that's they're saying, yo, go on my MySpace or my Facebook, or whatever it may be, and listen to my song, you know, thirty thousand times a day. I mean, you can't really, we can't monetize that because that's not real play. That's not real performances. For those of you who have questions, I'm going to ask you to please line up at the very end. There's a microphone and a stand there. Um, Maestro, please. Yeah. I, I guess I, I heard that question a little different. Um, repeat it. Repeat it how you heard it. Oh, well.